Welcome back to the channel, Greg Allen, Greg Allen F1, coming to you today with my very first ever reaction video to another YouTuber, uh, Peter on Pole and the four McLaren fans uh, live stream that they did yesterday, talking all things Formula One and specifically McLaren and their uh, horrendous start to the season. Uh, obviously, being a McLaren fan myself, not really what I want to see. Very cool live stream I did. If you uh, have not heard of their channel, go check it out, Peter on Pole. Uh, definitely a smaller channel coming up. Very fun. I hopped onto their comment section yesterday and got right involved with uh, leaving some comments. Which brings me to the topic of today's video. Daniel Ricardo in a McLaren. Does he have the nerve to get everything he needs to out of that car? Or is he maybe on the downward trend in his career? That's what I want to take a look at. So I made a comment in the chat of their live stream about how Daniel Ricciardo did much better in the second year at Renault, but this year is a little bit different situation for him at McLaren since this McLaren car is a brand new one, so it's essentially like Daniel Ricciardo's hopping into a, uh, a new car all over again with a new team all over again because of the regulation changes. Uh, they didn't really want to hear that. They didn't want to hear those excuses, so what I want to do is play their video clip, see what they had to say on it, and then I'll kind of take a look at uh, whether or not we can see any kind of data trend on whether or not we can have any clue as to how Daniel Ricciardo does throughout his F1 career uh, whenever there's a major change in a team or he changes teams. So let's take a look at their clip first. No word of a lie. Ricciardo's second year at Renault was better, but this year is a new car again for him. I'm not here to make this is, this, this is a guy for... who's he's driven 10 years in the sport, Greg. You know what I'm saying? Like... We it's kind of like, you know that man that make excuses for Vettel or that? It's the same kind of scenario. I ain't making excuses for these. These men are big men in the sport. <laughs> yeah. They've gone through multiple regulations. I'm not having it. Honestly, like if, if Ricard, for me, if Ricardo wants it that bad, I think we would be getting, we'll be squeezing the life out of everything out of that car. I don't think he is. Sorry to question his mentality and whatnot or question his effort, but I'm not seeing it. I'm genuinely not seeing it. In, in all fairness, if you know, like, what, okay, it's 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 a bad example because we've had Alonzos of this world, right? Where they have we've drained everything. Yeah, they've drained everything they can out of that car, and this is what we got. You know what I'm saying? When when Alonso was getting cars that were were they had punctures and he was finishing in the top ten. Oh, that Baku race, I remember the Baku race. Yeah, you know, you you think oh, to yourself, what? come on, that was like a minute down. That, that you know. <laughs> Exactly. After you know, guys that, that, that's, that's, that is worthy of like world championship stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. All right. So obviously uh, a good clip from them. Love that they uh, responded to my question. I appreciate that, guys, if you come across this video. So let's talk a little bit about that. So, you, you know, first thing that comes to mind to me is, is uh, Daniel Ricardo, Fernando Alonso. Uh, of course he's not. Fernando Alonso is a multi-time champion. Uh, I don't know that we're ever going to see that potential from Daniel Ricardo. Uh, I also think their driving styles are very different. Uh, I think they're not comparable drivers in that way. Um, but I do see the validity of the point of, yes, Fernando Alonso has this amazing ability to get the absolute most out of a car he's in. Uh, we see that constantly. But is Daniel Ricciardo, you know, they're starting to keep an eye on him later in that video. Is he maybe not giving everything he can to McLaren? Um, he was so vastly outperformed by Lando Norris, it seemed. So what I want to do is do what I do best on this channel, take a look at all of the numbers. So let's get right into that on my patented whiteboard here that I stole from another channel. <laughs> Not an F1 channel though. So Daniel Ricciardo, the good old number three here, he is 32 years of age. He joined Formula One in 2011, uh, has eight wins at the greatest you know, motorsport in the world. So at the pinnacle, eight wins is nothing to uh, shy away from. That's a fantastic accomplishment. 32 podiums and 1,274 points throughout those last 10 years of racing, as they said, 10 years into it. But let's take a look at his stats career-wise when we go in year by year about every team. Joins with HRT, and I'm actually going to move this over just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. No science to my channel here, obviously. HRT, he races 11 races, you know, goose eggs across the board here. Uh, no points, and in the driver standings, he winds up with a 27th here. Then he joins Toro Rosso, and that's when we start getting to see Danny Rick for what we know him today. It's the very early ages there. So year one, he gets 20 races in there. Zero wins, zero podiums, but 10 points. So he does finish 18th in the driver standings. Still nothing incredible, but it's those year twos that I kind of made a claim about in that video that I wanted to focus on. And early on in Toro Rosso, he races one less race and does prove me right. 
19 races, no wins, no podiums, but he does double the amount of points he scores. 20 points for Toro Rosso that year. Finishes 14th in the driver standings. Then he gets the call up to Red Bull. And his first year at Red Bull is fantastic. 19 races, 3 wins, which is a career high for him. He has not matched that since. 8 podiums for 238 points, which is second all-time for him. And he finishes third in the driver standings. It's a fantastic for year for him, but it is worth noting that Red Bull was in a really, really good place at that point and was you know coming off and in the middle of winning multiple championships. So a very fantastic first year at the, at the main uh, team at that point. Year two, my theory gets shot to hell at this point, because year two, Red Bull has some struggles and takes a big step backwards. He races 19 races, no wins, just the two podiums, 92 points. Eighth in the driver standings, still a top 10, which is where Danny Grech has, has lived most of his career is in that top 10, so that's good. Not a great year for Red Bull, though, and certainly not a good year for, for Daniel Ricciardo. By year three, though, we get 21 races, and Red Bull's back into at least putting themselves in the conversation of being a perennial winner, and he does win. He gets a, his fourth career win, matches his career best in podiums with eight, and has just a monster year in the points. It's his best year in Formula One to this date. 256 points, third in the driver standings, super competitive uh, at the top of the field there. You have, uh, you know, Ferraris, Lewis Hamilton uh, in the Mercedes, uh, Nico Rosberg, all of those guys are just killing it at this point. So uh, a good year for Daniel Ricciardo, but Red Bull still isn't in that championship conversation yet. Uh, the year after that, 20 races, gets another win, gets his career high for podiums where he hits the podium nine times in that year, 200 points. Drops back to fifth in the driver standings at the end of the year. Still respectable year, uh, but now we're starting to have the, the Max Verstappen conversation and who's going to be that number one driver, which becomes extremely evident in the, the following season, which happens to be his last season in the Red Bull. 21 races, he gets his two wins. His big issue here in this year, reliability was a massive issue for him. He could not finish races, tons of retirements. And as a result, he drops down just two podiums, which for a Red Bull not good. It's his second worst year in the Red Bull and podiums. Only this year, uh, Max was getting a lot of them. So that was a big glaring issue for him in 2018. Does get redemption at Monaco, of course, so a fantastic race for that one. But he drops down to 170 points and falls back to sixth in the driver standings. And of course, famously makes the decision that he is going to vacate that second seat at Red Bull and move on to a new team. So we go over to Renault. 21 races in his first year with Re Renault. Zero wins, zero podiums, just a measly 54 points. It's one of his worst careers in Formula One, but I think it's also important to point out Renault looked horrendous that year. They had all kind of issues. Um, Nico Hulkenberg did not look any better in that car. We've seen what a super sub Hulk can be. Um, they, were, they were on the precipice of kind of turning around that team, and Ricardo definitely struggled. It was a, an absolute struggle. In my opinion, a bigger struggle at Renault's first year than McLaren was last year, um, except for maybe pace compared to his teammate. I think that's why it's so glaring what happened at McLaren, but let's not get ahead of that. Year two at Renault, which was my claim in that video, 17 races, no wins, but two massive podiums for him. He was constantly in the top eight. We were seeing that for him a lot, and towards the end of the year, we saw it from Esteban Alcon as well, but he really had a... Uh, a great season, a great year too, and there was a lot of questions because going into that season, he already made that decision to make the move to McLaren, and everyone was kind of wondering, myself on this channel too, was that the right move for Daniel Ricciardo? Um, obviously, I wanted him over at McLaren, but the way Renault was trending, he, he might be thinking now, was that the right move? Gets 119 points, back up to fifth place, which was his best in four years. So another really good year for him in the driver standings, and I think that's what you're getting with Daniel Ricciardo. Regardless of how bad it seems to be going for him, even when he has that bad first year, he is consistently finished in the top 10 in points uh, pretty much every year of his career, So um, since going to a major team, I should say. So now we move over to McLaren last year, 22 Grand Prix. He does get a massive win there, uh, really needed because, yes, as Peter Ampol did mention, and, and they talked about it a lot, uh, he had a really bad year last year in McLaren from what the expectations were. And the difference between, I think, last year versus his first year at Renault is absolutely the fact that uh, Renault, both drivers, were struggling and kind of around the same pace. And it was definitely a team and equipment issue. Whereas last year, Lando Norris raced really well and had a very, very good, solid season again. The team did really well in the constructors, but Ricardo was 
struggling to adjust to that car and struggling to maintain same pace as Norris. Obviously, the most glaring example of that was Monaco last year, um, which you know was definitely, I think, a low point for Ricardo in his career. But he does rebound. He does get a win, and he I felt that he was getting stronger towards the end of that year. Gets that one win, gets the one podium, 115 points, and eighth in the driver standing. So he does drop three spots from where he was at Renault a year earlier on a better, arguably better team. Um, but point-wise, he's really not that far off from where he was in that second year. Just four points off of, of his mark that he was at Renault. So it's really, was it bad for what we were expecting at McLaren? Yeah, was it as bad as we were maybe making it out to be? That, that I do wonder. I don't think so. Uh, and of course, year two remains to be seen. We're one race in. Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo both looked horrendous. I don't think it's either of their faults in this case. Uh, Ricciardo had no, basically no practice, no testing, and, and still managed to finish ahead of Lando Norris for what it's worth. Um, but, you know, being the second loser is still a loser, and that's not where we want to be with McLaren. I was hoping when I did these stats, I'd be able to get a little bit more high-level trend of how Daniel Ricciardo goes. But I think what we're actually seeing is that Daniel Ricciardo has a sense a driving style that if he can become one with the car and, and figure out how to how to handle that car he can be ex as good as anyone else on the grid an extremely talented driver but if he struggles with it he struggles with it more than his teammates at times and we saw that at red bull we, we're seeing that at mclaren now versus lando um so i think that at 32 years of age it's definitely too early to be calling him washed up as i saw people in those comments section talking it's too early to be talking about maybe moving on from him at mclaren but I think it is, uh, based on all of these stats here, worth noting that we don't really know what we're going to get with Ricardo year in to year out. He uh, is all over the place when it comes to, to podiums and points. Um, what we do know is that he finishes in the top 10 in the driver's standings every year. Um, I, based on the first race, it might be hard for him or Lando to do that this year, because right now, after one race, we're panicking as McLaren fans and thinking that we look like Williams did last year. But... I don't think it's going to be that bad. I do think this team will improve, and I do think they will be scoring points by the end of this year. They've made too, too much progress over the last few years in development and uh, finances going into this team. You know, they're never going to be a Mercedes with that, but uh, I do think that they will turn that around. So, no, I don't think it's panic time for Daniel Ricciardo yet. And if he's on a bad team this year and McLaren winds up being bad, one race in, he's already shown that he can outperform Lando. It's such a small sample size, it means absolutely nothing. And, you know, Lando's going to be much better the rest of the year as well. But it's going to be tough to get a full, accurate judgment on Daniel Ricciardo if this team is struggling all year. And we might just have a, a teammate comparison to go on by the end of the year. I personally think that he's up to the challenge. I, I would not, by any means, be selling if this was stock market on, on Daniel Ricciardo yet. One thing they did talk about in their video, too, is where would Daniel Ricciardo go after McLaren? And I do agree, there's not a lot of options, you know, in Formula 1. Uh, I could see him making some moves outside of F1, maybe going to IndyCar. Uh, I know a lot of people are speculating on NASCAR. I don't think that's a great fit for Daniel Ricciardo. Um, F1 drivers in general have a hard time making that transition. And at this point in his 30s, uh, we have really seen drivers fail try to do that in their 30s in NASCAR. It's a totally different type of motorsport, so... Um, but I, I think it's too early to be having those conversations. I think Daniel Ricciardo is going to be with McLaren for another couple of years after this, to be honest with you, uh, unless a, a Pato Award winds up making the move over um, and, and gets pushed by McLaren. I, I think you're going to see Danny Rick here for at least one to two more seasons after this. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you came across this, check out Peter on Paul's channel, of course, and of course, like and subscribe this one. My driver power rankings will be coming to you tomorrow. That's Thursday, right before the Grand Prix. See you in the next video.